Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence. and the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, Without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press 
to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Possibly some of the realest stuff um, that a politician has said in uh, you know half a century. Um, JFK, that was JFK by the way. Uh, that was uh, audio pulled from a YouTube video I found called "The Speech That Got JFK Killed," and I can see why, because he was telling the truth. He had faith in the news and against the uh, corrupt um, financial establishment. He, um, ah, God, if if he was like, if he was a world leader today, I think it would, well, it would just completely change the game in terms of he. If he for what he says there and his beliefs, and actually I've, I've done a bit of research on him in the last few weeks, it, like, for me, the perfect uh, leader of a country, I think. Um, someone who says what he means to say, um, speaks his mind, um, can hold a room, um, does takes on challenges, uh, can convince a country that things are happening for the right reasons. Um, actual progressive stuff like um, like black people um, going to university for the first time uh, was that in Alabama. Like a, a, a genuine progressive president, rather than now who's who I uh, just feel like. Um, presidents or leaders are doing it for a, for an ulterior motive. I feel like he had morals, and um, uh, for me, that speech, although it probably, excuse me, probably is the speech that got him killed. Oh, oh, it's the ideas that got him killed. Those ideals, because he, let's be honest, um, anyone who does friggin' inch of research on a. Uh, his assassination I can clearly see it wasn't Lee Harvey Oswald being a rampant gunman. Shoot, no, um, it was a government. It was a government-led um, thing. Um, for for example, uh, it was. It was actually. Ugh, this, is this going to discredit everything I'm just about to say? It was actually Jesse Ventura. I was listening to said a. Um, that apparently um, within a few days they closed the case on the investigation. Um, some, but but actually, if you see some photos, that some bullet holes come from the front of the car. Um, he was shot in the throat. He grabs his throat, and um, there was loads of white puffs of smoke seen from um, the grassy knoll to the right hand side in the front of the car. And what this guy's meant to shoot a bolt action rifle within six seconds three times. That's meant to reload and put it in no. And accurately hit them hit the sniper uh, hit the present every time. It's just it 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 was it's a that's just the pinnacle of government cover ups and uh interest it's interestingly um incomplete um contrast to what he's saying this whole secrecy thing is a is it a, a poison um and it's just it's it's a bit sad um that someone back then had such faith and faith in the press faith in the news and uh, it'd be great to for the news to run this now and see kind of what's what's become of them since the 60s you know the, the the press and the news were a trusted source back then of actual journalists now they're just a bought and paid for um propaganda campaign um by whichever party pays i guess pays the most you know you've got like look at fox news in the in the states like would that ever post anything pro 
anything democratic or pro, you know, or like they've got the they may take some information in and just spin it in this kind of Republican right wing way. Well, why can't you just look at it and just just admit, you know, just be just say what the the facts say. Say why does everything have to be spun in a right or left wing way? Why can't it just be kind of a an honest, true feeling? Or it's a does everything have a friggin' um like oh what's the word I'm looking for like uh, not opinion but like does everything have to have a um a way of spinning it why why can't just things be you know that uh, that's terribly explained but um. I, I, I don't know, I was just, I was just this morning just watching a lot of, like, conspiracy things. Um, again, relating to this, this election and stuff, you just look back at what he tried to do for a country back when they were genuinely a superpower, um, a great leader in terms of them not kind of, you know, winning the war, coming out of the, the 50s ex, ex, um, experiment with, like, nuclear programs. And um, having this Cold War and leading, being a strong leader uh, and kind of um, defeating the mind games with the Russians, but also being a progressive leader. See that those two things don't go hand in hand anymore, being a progressive person, because the the progression isn't from a genuine pl- place. You know, it's for it's for ratings, it's for going up in the polls. It's It's never just... Not a man of the people. Are any of uh, is Hillary or Trump a man of the people, a person of the p- people? You know. When was the last time that they were one of the people? Were they ever one of the people to be able to now speak for the people? I guess well, <laughs> he's a Kennedy. I guess that's just a uh, yeah. That is a terrible example. Uh, discredit that. I don't know. I'm I'm always so confused about uh, politics. I don't think it's a good thing that everyone's now now a politician, me included. This this podcast especially is probably not for me, in my opinion, probably not a good thing that people can say. Well, I suppose um, y- if you guys want to listen to it, you guys come and find it, and that's not. I've got not got a problem with that. But like, you know, it's like everybody on the news now is it. We have this student from Manchester University come to speak about it. It's like, uh, are you a politician? You're 18 years old. Do you know anything? Do I know anything? I'm 25. Probably not. No. But you know, I probably know more than um, a lot of you know 50 year olds who choose to live their life with their heads buried in the sand. I don't know. I just thought I'd, I'd uh, post that. I quite like it. I thought it was a great speech. I thought it's a great um, indication of where we're at now, and kind of for me, um, for me that speech sums up kind of my beliefs and what I'd expect to see in a democratic uh, um, country or ci- not civilization society, and. Um, a really fair president and someone who you really should be looking up to. I've probably I haven't done enough research to see what was bad about the guy. Um, if you guys had anything that would completely contradict everything I've just said in this podcast, then fair enough, leave it in the comments. Uh, but I think he sounds like a top-notch dude, um, and it's a shame there's no one like that anymore um, that could rise to you know power in the states. Um, it would be nice just to see someone who actually had the people in mind um, or or had the bigger picture in mind of, you know, going to the moon and doing things because they're hard and because then because it's a challenge, because we're actually progressing as a society. That's what being progressive is, challenging yourself rather than just whinging about um, fake problems that pop up every two weeks, you know? Um, he, was a, he was a progressive guy and... Um, uh, I'd like to read on upon on his assass- uh, on his assassination. Am I becoming a conspiracy theorist? Well, I'm starting to believe quite a few of them, <laughs> so possibly. Um, did we go to the moon? Uh, I guess that's another podcast, but I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, enjoy that, and I'll uh, speak to you tomorrow. Goodbye.
See you tomorrow. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.